Welcome back to Occupy the Media. To join the conversation, call us at 877-575-FSTV or follow the conversation on our Facebook and Twitter pages where we are asking you to chime in on today's topics. We'll be reading some of those comments throughout the show. And in this segment, we want to talk about how the corporate media, the 1% media, is covering the issues that impact the rest of us, the 99%. And with us is Timothy Carr, Senior Strategy Director at Free Press. Thanks so much for joining us again, Tim. Always, always a pleasure. Thank you for having me on. So Ben Conan and Jerry Greenfield of Ben & Jerry's Ice Cream have been pr proponents of progressive social change for years, and now they are helping to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars for the Occupy movement. But no good deed goes unpunished, at least not for the right-wing media. Let's take a look at what Bill O'Reilly had to say. As we predicted last fall, the Occupy Wall Street movement has diminished greatly. That's because the good people who were in the movement fled when the loons took over. And there are not enough loons to sustain a viable nationwide presence. Enter Ben and Jerry, the Vermont ice cream guys. As you may know, they are committed left-wingers who want a progressive agenda in the United States. So now they are organizing a bunch of like-minded people to raise money to pay far-left agitators. Let me repeat that. Ben and Jerry... The ice cream guys are trying to raise nearly $2 million to give out, quote, grants to hardcore Occupy protesters. So what exactly is a grant? Well, it's a salary. They're going to pay people to agitate all across the USA. That's dangerous because, as we've seen in cities like Oakland and New York, people get hurt. But apparently Ben and Jerry don't care. With Bill O'Reilly, where do you even begin? But Timothy Carr, <laughs> uh, what is your take on this latest kerfuffle with Bill O'Reilly and his outrage over Ben and Jerry's? Oh, I, it, I think it's absolutely ridiculous. I mean, you know, we as Americans have the right to peaceably assemble and, and petition gov government for redress of our, our grievances. And if that language sounds familiar, it's because it's in the First Amendment that uh, Bill O'Reilly would somehow equate occupiers coming out in public and, and trying to, you know, uh, to protest with, with inciting violence and, you know, all these sorts of things is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, he's, what, what Ben and Jerry are trying to do is to simply support that effort through, through a foundation. They're, they're, they, they're hoping to raise about uh, $1.8 million so that they can fund uh, some of the Occupy uh, Wall Street actions and things like but that. But Timoth I mean, Timothy Carr, the, uh, Ben and Jerry's raising all these money. I mean, these guys are very wealthy individuals, perhaps even within the 1% at this point. The fact that they're giving money to Occupy Wall Street, how is that any different than what we're seeing with the super PACs where some of these billionaires can, can just dump money into political campaigns? Well, there are two issues here. The first one is Bill O'Reilly's comments, which we have to debunk for being completely ridiculous as they are. I mean, he's, he's, he's attacking these people without any justification. Now, the other question is whether or not uh, Ben and Jerry should be supporting uh, the Occupy movement in this way. And I was actually in Zuccotti Park when they were there giving out ice cream. And there were even occupiers at that time who didn't want to accept their ice cream because they felt that they would somehow be beholden to them. And uh, so there are some serious questions about whether or not the Occupy movement should take this money. There are, there are some reservations there. Uh, because you don't want to be compared negatively in the way people often disparage the Tea Party. The Tea Party was supported by corporate money that was funneled through Freedom Works and Americans for Prosperity. Uh, and they fell a victim to this accusation, which is legitimate in some respects, of being, you know, an astroturfing, astroturf organization, fake grassroots. Okay, and it'll be interesting to see how much money they raise and how they decide to distribute that money to Occupy Wall Street groups. But, Don, I know uh, we're going to take some calls, but what's your quick take on Ben and Jerry's? Well, I, I just want to give them props. I mean, here are two uh, guys from Vermont who made a ton of money. Uh, in, with ice cream products, really good ice cream products, uh, now deciding to, to, to give back uh, uh, to a movement that is not associated with any political party or any individual leader. Yep. And, I, and I think it's, uh, this should be commended for it. And it's we should wonderful. say that they are not, they don't own Ben & Jerry's anymore. They sold off they the sold company Nestle. This is right. them acting as private right. citizens. Right. This, they, they are patriotic millionaires as the term is <laughs> being used now. And mm -hmm. you've heard enough from us, but now we want to hear from you. The lines are open. Give us a call at 877-575-FSTV or connect with us on our Facebook and Twitter pages. Fight, Fight, 
And on those social media pages, we asked about Ben and Jerry's effort to fund the Occupy movement. And here's what some of you are saying on our Facebook and Twitter feeds. Susan wrote, money is money no matter who it comes from. Michelle writes, taking money from Ben Cohen and Jerry Greenfield, the founders of Ben and Jerry's and not the actual business, is no issue whatsoever. Whereas uh, Dylan writes, Ben and Jerry's should donate the money, no strings attached, and Occupy Wall Street should have no favor favoritism to Ben and Jerry's wishes. Okay, we have a caller on the line. It is Grant from California. You're on Occupy the Media. Uh, yes, uh, hi. I. Uh had a complaint uh, about the woman caller that okay. was uh, on before. And uh, my complaint is this, that uh, she doesn't understand that the corporate media is not going to support a group that is against corporate greed and corporate personhood, which makes corporate greed that much worse. Uh, she's not going to get a fair slice of media that represents occupiers. Okay, so Grant, if I hear what you're saying is that the, 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 the chips are stacked against in, in sort of the media game against Occupy people trying to take aim at, at corporate funding. All right, well, well, Grant from California, thanks a lot for your call. Uh, Timothy Carr, quick uh, response to that. It, it, can, pe can Occupy people get a fair shake from, from the corporate media? Well, I mean, there are some good journalists among the corporate media. Um, unfortunately, there are also some bad ones, and we've seen uh, a lot of these kind of efforts to pigeonhole and fit the Occupy movement into, you know, a 15-second soundbite, which, uh, as anyone who follows the movement knows, it's really not a fair shake. And uh, so, uh, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to tar the whole, uh, whole corporate media as being irresponsible. There are some good journalists amongst them, but by and large, they have a problem in trying to understand what the movement is about in the kind of limited news formats that they use. Okay, and so and so speaking of uh, putting people into sound bites, Timothy Carr, we've run out of time. <laughs> uh, so thanks a lot for joining us. Always a pleasure. Uh, Timothy Carr, he's a senior strategy director at freepress.net. We're going to take another quick break, but we want to hear from you to join the conversation. Call us at 877-575-FSTV. Post a comment on our Facebook page or follow us on Twitter. Hello, I'm Antoine June with your Occupy update. On April 16th, occupiers will greet Congress's return to D.C. with direct actions as they occupy power and show just how strong occupy power is. For more information, please visit nowdc.org.